on today's Techno Babble using Skype in your church services. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now, here's your host, Paul Clifford. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Tech No Babble. I, of course, am your host, Paul Allen Clifford, and I would like you to get in contact me uh, get in contact with me by dropping me a line, Paul at TrinityDigitalMedia.com, or a voicemail one eight seven 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 six three three two four six, and I'll be happy to answer your questions every Friday on our Friday Question and Answer Show, just like this when it records live at ChurchTechCast.com at eleven a.m. Eastern, eight a.m. Pacific, or three p.m. UTC, and I look forward to getting all of your questions. You can also drop me a line on Twitter. I'm Paul Allen Cliff. That's P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. A-L-A-N is my middle name. Uh, and my cliff on the end there is just one F, C-L-I-F. So feel free to drop me a line there. So let's get started talking about this very thing uh, using Skype in your services. So you might be wondering why would you use Skype in your services? Well there's actually a few different reasons. Uh, the first one is let's say that you have uh, you live stream your church services and people join you from different parts of the world. More specifically let's say that someone isn't just tuning in once in a while, they're actually in a fairly remote location, but they tune in like crazy. They're there a lot. So they're a regular attender, and you later find out that because of your video streaming ministry, uh, Jesus has really encountered them, and their life has been profoundly changed. Wouldn't that be quite an encouragement to those of you, uh, those of the members that are in the local church to know that, well, let me give you a perfect story. There's a lady who's the sister of a guy that uh, goes to our church in person, and she attends online. And uh, Jesus really met her, and she gave her life to Christ and all. Well, she lives in Alaska, so we're in Lexington, Kentucky. That's a little bit of distance between those two places. Um, so what we did was we wanted her to tell her story, to give her testimony, to use the older way of saying it. And so we used Skype. And that really went over really well. And uh, our uh, executive pastor was able to ask her a few questions and then she was just able to tell her story from there. So that's one situation. Another situation is what if there's um, from time to time you have like a, uh, a missionary tell his or her story. Well, what if you could have a question and answer kind of situation going on with a missionary who's halfway across the world. Skype would allow you to do just that. Finally, what if it's just an opportunity for your people to connect with members of your congregation that have gone out on a short-term mission trip or something like that, maybe on 
Wednesday night during uh, the children's summer camp, you could connect with uh, the children's pastor. You could say, okay, God is really meeting us in some great ways, and here's this and that and the other. And you could have uh, a little back and forth. Now, you can pre-record all that, and we'll get into that here in just a minute. But I think there's something to the spontaneity of having the live conversation on Skype. Just as I'm recording this live, I could absolutely do a lot of work on it and uh, increase the quality, but there's something about the spontaneity of live that I, I really like. And plus, when I'm recording this, as soon as I get done recording it, I trim off the beginning and I'm done, which is really, really cool. Um, so the next thing that you might be wondering is how you would do this. So it's, it's one thing to think, well, it's a good idea. It's another to figure out the how. So let's talk about the how. First off, from an audio perspective, what I would use is on most audio boards, at least most decent sized audio boards, you will have uh, submixes that you can send. Now, what I want you to do is make a submix of everything but the Skype channel and send that into the computer. And uh, so basically what happens is when someone is talking into a microphone, uh, let's say it's your, your senior pastor, music minister, whoever's talking with this person, they would... Uh, you'd be sending the audio from your microphone or any other audio that you want, but not the audio from the person who's doing Skype. The audio from the person that's doing Skype comes through your house system, but that's it. And you've got to be pretty quick on the mute button because you're going to want to mute it when the Skype audio is playing so that the handheld or the lavalier or whatever the person who's interviewing them um, so that that doesn't pick up the Skype audio and start uh, kind of a loop. So from an audio perspective, you're going to want to isolate those. And um, that's kind of good to know. Now, from a video perspective, what I would do is I would do a two monitor setup and put the person who is on Skype on the secondary monitor and put the feed of what you're sending to them on the primary monitor so that you don't necessarily see that. Now you'll need to have a camera so that they can see the person who's interviewing them but this could be as simple as having the laptop on the podium and uh, having an external webcam pointed at the pastor and running all your other wires from that point back to the audio booth or wherever you're doing it. Uh, it could also be the case that... Um, you would want to use the video coming from an iMag system, from the video switcher, etc. And again, we don't want to send back the video that the person is sending to us because that doesn't make any sense. But we would want to send uh, a camera. So you might have a just a dedicated camera that you know this is the one I'm sending uh, to the Skype. And that could be very helpful as well. So there are a few problems. First off, Skype is notoriously unreliable. So sometimes it'll work beautiful. The audio will be better than a telephone. It will just be phenomenal. And sometimes for reasons that people aren't quite sure of, it just refuses to work. It kicks people off all the time. So Anytime you're doing this in church, I would have a backup plan. My backup plan would be I would have a pre-recorded video of the Skype conversation from earlier just in case you get kicked off, right? This is, in television news, we call this a look live. So 
back when I worked at local in local television, we would have live feeds from all over the city using microwave, which is a, a point-to-point transmission. Well, sometimes we get just outside of the range. And uh, since we're in Kentucky, there's hills and valleys, so it's pretty easy to do. So in that case, what we would do is we would pre-record a segment, and the anchor would say, so now we have so-and-so, uh, now we have Lee live in Frankfurt, uh, let's go to him. And Lee would start talking. This is all pre-recorded, so you wouldn't see the little live bug on the screen. But we wouldn't say, this is pre-recorded, by the way. We just wouldn't mention it. It's not that we were trying to fool people. It's just no need to mention this is pre-recorded five minutes ago. So you could have a look live as your backup where you record just the gist of what you want the person to say ahead of time so that you know that you have it. If your internet goes down, if their internet goes down, if they lose power, whatever, you've got it as a backup. Now, it could be that you try and do this a few times and you find they've got a horrible connection. They just don't have the ability to do this. If that's the case, what I would do is put up a graphic of where they are in the world and uh, a picture of them. And this is what we call a phoner. So basically, we could simulate that they're on the phone. Now you can still use Skype to save all kinds of money, but just turn off the video and the audio takes much less bandwidth than the video would. So that's another way that I would do it is to do that. Now, obviously you can pre-record something and you can pre-record it, uh, upload it to Dropbox, and then download it, things like that. But it could be that the person isn't really a videographer. They don't have a lot of video expertise. In fact, uh, I've seen sometimes in setups where even a videographer doesn't have the appropriate equipment to get the best video they can get. For example, this camera that I'm using is a webcam and it wants to get a certain amount of brightness. So depending on where I put my hands, the light bounces off in different ways. So there, it just did it. The It got brighter. So that's limitations that you can see is things like that. So it could be that you won't be able to pre-record anything that looks any better than Skype. Now, ideally, you would. And ideally, you know, if plane tickets were 50 cents and you could go anywhere in the world on on, uh, two quarters, you'd send someone with uh, camera equipment and video expertise to film their story and then send it back to church. Ideally, you could do that. And you might do that as a backup because of the just the great immediacy of the live presentation. Now, there, I've said Skype. There are a couple of alternatives. In addition to Skype, you could use Google Hangouts. You could use um, FaceTime from Apple. Any of those are fine, but you'll see that there are some limitations like um, Google Hangouts. As you're doing them, well, the Hangouts on air as you're doing them are eh, iffy in the quality that your the interface has for you. And it only shows you locally and everyone else in small boxes underneath. Now, uh, you could do a Hangout on air, but there's a delay there. So that might be not necessarily the best situation. Um, Apple's FaceTime might work perfectly fine. It could be that they have an iPad or they have an iPhone, but they don't have a computer. So it could be that FaceTime would be a better solution for them. Just make sure that 
you get them to wear headphones so that they don't echo on their end and make sure that they've got a good microphone and they're not using the built-in microphone on their computer because you'll get a not as good as sound as you could. Now, if you plan ahead, you could send them an appropriate microphone and camera that works pretty well that would help them. Um, and you would get better quality in that way. So these are all some tips to just help you do this. And you might not have even thought of using Skype in the service, but just in those situations that I told you, I could imagine that it would be very, very beneficial to a lot of churches to connect with people all over the world for various reasons. You could even... Let's say it's not a missionary. Maybe it's someone who just is on a business trip somewhere else in the world and you hear news that it's tumultuous in that part of the world or something. It might be nice to know, oh, they're fine or, yeah, it's crazy and I'm flying out tonight or whatever. Um, just updates to help you connect in ways that you just frankly couldn't in the past. So I hope that that helps you. I hope it gives you some ideas, some thoughts to think about as you're going out and changing eternity. Hey, by the way, just a quick reminder to uh, subscribe to the podcast, which you can do over at trinitydigitalmedia.com. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to subscribe as well. You can also go ahead and um, watch my other shows on every show records Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. UTC on churchtechcast.com, just like this one. Uh, on Mondays, we talk about using internet for the church. On Tuesdays, we talk about creativity. On Wednesdays, we talk about pursuing your calling. Thursdays, like today, we talk about using graphic design and videography in the church, and Friday I take your questions. So I hope that you will join me in one of these other shows and just enjoy what I have to offer. I hope that I can be a help to your ministry. So until next time, go out and change eternity. <laughs>